Tonight, the Seven Nightly News is followed by our telethon family movie, Batman, and the Jokers teamed up with other arch villains to try and dispose of the dynamic duo, Batman and Robin. Then at 8.30, the entertainment begins for 24 hours with a feast of stars, including Australia's own international sensation, John Farnham. It's Telethon 89, so give for the children and provide them with their very own miracle of love. It's all on Seven Tonight. Alan Bond relaxed about his corporation's record loss. Police investigate the mysterious death of a Subiaco man. And 8 to 1 bet Cole Diesel wins the Caulfield Cup. 7 Nightly News with Jeff Newman and Yvette Mooney. Good evening and welcome to 7 Nightly News on this telethon weekend. Also tonight, the Anglican Synod moves closer to the ordination of women and the telethon team warming up for tonight's opening. But first tonight, a day after posting the biggest loss in Australian corporate history, Alan Bond has come out fighting. Mr Bond says that his flagship company is far from collapse and he's preparing to fight back. Reporter Jackie Lang spoke to a relaxed Mr Bond at his Dalkeith home today. If it's often been said that Alan Bond thrives on a challenge, that was never more obvious than today. After the disastrous news that his corporate flagship had recorded losses of almost a billion dollars, Mr Bond was all smiles as he spoke of Bond Corp's prosperous future. They will be here in the years ahead. Have a regard to the fact that we have an undervalued brewing asset, so in the, our balance is 950 million. We've got a one and a half billion surplus there, plus we have surplus on our telephone assets and property assets, so we can comfortably digest this. Less easily digestible for Mr Bond, some of the reasons his companies have had trouble. High interest rates, the broadcasting tribunal, and sour deals with the WA government. It started off with our um, deposits uh, that we had with Rothwells and then uh, the major investment we made in Lonro and uh, of course we've made provisions for those losses now but uh, when the benefit of the hindsight they were, very, they were bad business decisions. Mr Bond says he and his loyal staff are now working overtime on some better business decisions including an asset selling program which he says should see his companies recording fat profits by this time next year. We've had two losses in 25 years. This is a bad loss year. We've got to go forward now and make that money back. The interview over, it was time to remind Slammer the St Bernard who was boss and set about recovering a few million dollars. Jackie Lang, Seven Nightly News. Police tonight are investigating the bizarre death of a young bushwalker missing for three days and nights in rugged terrain in Perth's foothills. As Laurie Brennan reports, a big search was launched for the young man but it ended in tragedy late this afternoon. Police divers scoured the Bickley Brook Reservoir and other nearby waterways for the missing man but could find nothing. It was very muddy and visibility was down to just a few metres, they said. Sniffer dogs hunted through the rugged bush but they couldn't find anything either. A 25-year-old man from Subiaco an experienced bushwalker, hadn't been seen since 1.30 on Wednesday when he told his mother he'd be home for tea that night. His friend Tom Stevens found his car yesterday at Bickley, where the man often bushwalks. He searched without result, then raised the alarm. Are you getting worried? Yeah, I am actually, yeah. It's been too long. He's been missing since Wednesday lunchtime. He is an experienced bushwalker though, yeah. you told me. Yep. yep. So there's still hope? Yeah, there's still hope for him, yeah. About 80 state emergency service searchers helped police in their grid search where the dogs had earlier picked up scent. When state government funding cuts have meant the grounding of the surf rescue chopper, police had to ask television stations, including Channel 7, for the use of their helicopters. We took the police up as the search continued into the afternoon when the body of the young man with a stocking mask on his face was found at a campsite. The officer in charge of the search has called in the scientific squad to determine the exact cause and circumstances of death. Ori Brennan reporting, 790 News. The Anglican Church in Perth has moved a step closer to ordaining women priests with a resolution passed at its synod meeting in Fremantle today. The matter now rests with the church's major judicial body. Years now, the issue of women priests has divided elements of the Anglican Church. At its 40th Perth Synod last night, the church's archbishop made his feelings patently clear. This stands as a remaining sign of disgraceful, sexist discrimination in the church to many, which can only hinder the proclamation of the gospel. The Diocese of Melbourne has already moved for the ordination of women priests, a matter to be decided next month by the church's highest judicial body, the Appellate Tribunal. Today, a similar motion was put to the vote at a synod session in Fremantle and was passed without dissent. 
Even its supporters were a little surprised by the strength of their win. The sinner just kept on proceeding. I, I sort of began to get extremely excited and thought how wonderful the sinner's behind us. The next major step comes at next month's session of the Appellate Tribunal, with Perth and Melbourne now set to ordain women priests if the decision goes their way. Jackie Lang, Seven Nightly News. Calls are increasing for tighter regulation of the road freight industry and for an urgent crackdown on speed in the continuing uproar over the Grafton bus tragedy. There was another accident involving a tourist coach today in which a motorcyclist and his pillion passenger were killed. And as Chris Simmon reports, it's been revealed that the semi-trailer driver who died yesterday with 19 others had been booked for speeding only hours before. The latest accident was early this morning when a motorcycle ran out of control on the Bilgola Peninsula, colliding with an oncoming bus, killing the young male rider and his female companion. It was only 24 hours after Australia's worst bus crash, in which 20 people died and 22 others were seriously injured. On a notorious stretch of the Pacific Highway near Grafton, the Sunliner coach was struck by a semi-trailer, spreading bodies and wreckage over 200 metres. The driver of the bus has been cleared by police, but it's now been revealed the truck driver had received seven traffic infringements in the last six months, the most recent for speeding just before the accident. State coroner Kevin Waller has said he'll conduct a full inquiry into the trucking industry and road conditions on the Pacific Highway. Today, the state opposition joined calls for tougher penalties, demanding recent cuts to rail services should now be restored. The state government will now spend $150 million upgrading the Pacific Highway, while increased pressure will be placed on the federal government to introduce tachographs to monitor truck speeds and compulsory seat belts for coaches. Chris Simmond, Seven Nightly News. And still to come on Seven Nightly News, President Bush stunned by the damage on his San Francisco visit. And protesters disrupt Caulfield Cup race day. Prime Minister Hawke is claiming a breakthrough in his push to ban mining in the Antarctic with the leaders of six countries now lining up to support him. Environmental concerns in South Africa continue to dominate the Commonwealth Summit in Malaysia where Mr Hawke is spending the weekend in private discussions on a luxury island. The heads of government arrived at the island resort of Langkawi to a tropical downpour. The plan, a sort of getaway get-together. Before he left Kuala Lumpur, Bob Hawke was pessimistic he could convince Britain's Margaret Thatcher to budge on applying sanctions against South Africa. I don't really believe that uh, we will be able to persuade uh, uh, Margaret uh, to agree. Uh, but perhaps something will happen that will bring us somewhat closer to our, to our position, I don't know. At the Langkawi Resort, the leaders are on their own, away from their bureaucrats, even time for a drink. But here Mrs Thatcher is again at odds with majority Commonwealth opinion, which wants more spending on the environment in the third world. She argues no new funding, just better management. But Mr Hawke has had a win on the environment. Half a world away, six countries have joined his push to have the Antarctic declared a world park. Mr Hawke says it's...